Hello, all of my young coffee friends. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, I'm so happy that you were able to join. We are going to be talking about the birds that live nearby and on coffee farms. This presentation today is brought to you by Novus Coffee Imports, Seeds for Progress, and Merck on Coffee. Today we have people joining us from all over the world. We want to welcome you. If you are a Spanish speaker, you may notice that we have captions at the bottom of each slide where you can read along with what is being said. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. Let's learn about habitats. What is a habitat? A habitat is a very special place where a species can live and thrive. A habitat has all the things that a species needs to grow healthy. Look at the picture. What kinds of things do you see in this habitat? How about food? Weather? See the sunshine? Shelter? Protection? Places for animals to hide and be safe? and fresh, clean water. Those are all of the things that an animal needs to be healthy in their habitat. All people and animals have special habitat needs. Let's think about your own habitat. What do you need to grow strong and be healthy? How about a house? Some place to live, some place to be protected? For animals, this also means some place where they can hide from predators. Clean, safe drinking water. You probably need some weather that works for you. I like it when it's really sunny out, but I'm a human and I can do a lot of things so that I can live in different habitats. I can change clothes if it gets really hot. I can put on a snow snowsuit if it gets really cold. Animals aren't able to do that. So for an animal, the weather is actually really important. They need to live in some kind of weather that allows them to have food and to have shelter, to stay warm and to stay healthy. Ooh, fresh fruits, vegetables, plenty of food to eat. That's really important. And for people and, and animals too, being in a place where you have your family or you have other people that make you feel happy is really, really important. Let's learn a little bit about all kinds of habitats. As I'm talking about the habitats, I want you to think about what kind of habitat you live in. Think about outside, what it looks like, what kind of trees. Maybe you even see some of the animals on this picture that remind you of animals that you see at home or of animals that remind you of places where you have traveled. First one is the coniferous forest. See those trees? Those are coniferous trees and they have uh, pine cones on them. So the word cone is part of coniferous. Coniferous trees are trees that have cones. You might also think about these trees a lot of times looking like Christmas trees. Next we have the deciduous forest. Here we have temperate grasslands. See the buffalo munching away on all of the grass? Then a Mediterranean climate. Look at these, you have a couple of trees here, some nice animals, lots of things to eat for the animals. And then tundra, ooh, so cold. So you have some ice and some really cold areas, but then there's also some vegetation and plants that help these animals to live and thrive. Next one is a hot desert. That is not my favorite habitat. I would not do very well there. Then, tropical rainforest. 
This might actually be a habitat that looks familiar to many of you. We see the beautiful trees, birds flying. Next is polar ice. You see the penguins over there. The penguins and many of the other animals that live on the polar ice are able to survive without plants. They eat a lot of fish, a lot of things that live in the sea, and a lot of meat. There are are, it's a, much more difficult to live in a polar ice area. The savanna. This is an area that you might recognize. You see the zebras in there? You might recognize this as some of the habitat that a person would see in Africa. So we have tall, bushy trees up there. Those are the kind of trees that provide shade from the hot sun and also are so yummy for giraffes. And next we have the mountain area. The mountain is rocky and has a lot of hills. It's very cold and there's not a lot of vegetation there, but it does support a wide variety of different animals. Now, if one habitat doesn't work for you and you're an animal, you might actually need to change from one habitat to the next habitat. A lot of these habitats have different seasons, so they have different weather and different food available in the wintertime than in the summertime. Migration is a seasonal movement from one place to the other. This can be to find more food, better shelter, or better weather that allows a creature to grow healthy. Look, here's our little western tanager. Let's look and see where the western tanager likes to migrate. The western tanager starts over here in the forest where it lives during the spring and summertime and then when it starts to get cold the western tanager flies all the way over to the tropical rainforest and has a seasonal migration. Let's learn a little bit more about the western tanager. The western tanager is a medium-sized songbird. It spends the summer and spring nesting in the coniferous forests of Western North America. That's the United States and Canada. Special trees of the coniferous forest are the perfect habitat for their nests. They spend the winters in the, and then in the winter, when it's starting to get cold in the coniferous forest, the western tanager spends, flies south and spends the winters in the beautiful rainforests of Central America, especially at beautiful coffee farms. Let's take a minute to hear the Western Tanager's beautiful song, and you'll understand why it's called a songbird. Isn't that wonderful? So that's what a Western Tanager sounds like. What's so neat is that's a song that you might hear in your backyard in Costa Rica, or you might hear that in your backyard in Oregon where I live. All right, so let's learn about these, these uh, habitats that the Western Tanager lives in. In the summer, the Western Tanager spends its time in the coniferous forest. So we can see, this is a picture of what those tall trees look like where the western tanager likes to build their nests and have lay their eggs to have little babies. And then, um, and the weather there, it's nice and cool, um, nice summer temperatures, not too hot, not too cold. With, for food, there's plenty of bugs and grubs to eat that are living on the forest floor. In the winter, remember, our western tanager is flying south to live among the tall, shady trees of the rainforest. 
And these are rainforests that you would find in Nicaragua, in Costa Rica, Honduras, and Mexico, and probably Guatemala as well. The, these areas have nice warm winter temperatures. And during this time, the Western tanager loves to eat the dried fruits, seeds, and bugs that live or that exist in these areas. The coffee farm is also a beautiful habitat. Coffee farms are near the equator, which is right around the center of the earth. So uh, if you were to take a think of the earth like a basketball, it's right around the middle. Um, and that's where the equator is, okay? It's like a line all the way around the middle. Because of this, Coffee farms are fairly warm all year round. They don't get super cold, they don't get super hot. Tall shade trees help coffee to grow and they're the perfect places for birds to live. You see the tall shade trees here? Fruit trees grow by, the farmers also grow fruit trees. And the fruit trees help to feed the farmer. They help to bring in extra money for the farmer. They help the soil. And when the fruit falls off the trees, it also becomes food for the birds. What is good for coffee growing is also good for creating healthy habitats for birds and other animals. This is something that farmers have known for a very long time. So when a farmer takes care of their farm, they take care of it for the coffee that gets grown there. They take care of it for the birds who live there, for the people who come to work there. They take care of that farm so that that farm is a healthy habitat for everyone who lives there. Here are some of the things that a farmer does to help ensure that their farm is a healthy habitat. They recycle and compost for healthy soil, grow fruits and vegetables along with their coffee plants, protect the clean water on the farm for people and animals, use safe ways to fertilize and grow their plants, Use renewable energy sources like the sun or rivers and grow tall shade trees that shade the animals and or shade the coffee and shelter the animals. How many birds live on a coffee farm? Would you be surprised to learn that a healthy coffee farm can have between 40 and 60 different types of birds that live there? Many of the birds that live on coffee farms also spend part of their year living in the United States and Canada. How about we go bird watching? Okay, here's our first picture. Can you spot the bird that's in the picture? I'll give you a couple more seconds. Do you see it? Here it is. Look at that bird living on the farm. Here's another one. Can you spot the bird in this picture? Do you see the bird? This bird is brown and white and it blends in with the sticks that are on in the picture. There he is. This one is really, really tricky. You should even see if your mom or dad can figure this one out. Can you see the bird in this picture? I'll give you a hint. It's a big bird. It is in one of the corners. And its feathers are colored just like the rocks. Do you see it? Look at this grouse right there, hiding among the rocks almost perfectly camouflaged. Well, my friends, that is it for our presentation. Thank you so much for joining.
I'm so glad that you were here and I hope this was fun for you. I just wanna take a minute to thank some of the people that helped make this presentation possible. First, I wanna thank Novus Coffee Imports and Mercon, as well as Seeds for Progress. Education is so incredibly important to these three companies, both education for people who live at coffee farms and also for you. Thank you so much for joining us and we really look forward to having you at one of our next presentations.